will cover the sequences and series section of the math syllabus. So firstly, the most basic form of a sequence is the arithmetic sequence, which is also called a linear sequence. Um, so the general formula for a sequence of this nature is Tn, being any term that you're looking for, equals A, the first term of the sequence, plus N, the term number minus 1, times D, D being the common difference. Now, in order to determine your common difference, your common difference is the difference between any two consecutive terms in the sequence. So, say you could take your third term minus your second term, which will equal your second term minus your first term, which will equal your D being your common difference. Now, in many cases, they'll give you a sequence and they will ask you to determine whether it is arithmetic or geometric. Or quadratic. Um, in order to prove that it's an arithmetic sequence, you need to prove that you have a common difference that is equal in every instance. So you must prove that t3 minus t2, term 3 minus term 2, equals term 2 minus term 1. If that is true, your sequence is arithmetic. Now, your arithmetic mean, if for an arithmetic sequence you insert a number between two numbers, the number is called an arithmetic mean. Your arithmetic mean is calculated taking n1 being a term plus the next term in the sequence over 2. That is your arithmetic mean, which can sometimes be useful when calculating your arithmetic sequences. However, it's not essential in the syllabus. Now we move on to arithmetic series. A series is simply a sequence, however, it's the addition of every term in this sequence. So it's a sum. So when you're looking at the sum of a series for an arithmetic series, you look at the sum being the sum to the number of terms, so Sn. So the sum to however many terms you want equals n being the number of terms that you are adding up until times 2a, a being the first term of the sequence, plus n minus 1, n being the number of terms, times d being the common difference, which we calculated above, over 2. This can be simplified to sn being the sum equal to n, number of terms over 2, times a being the first term, plus l being the last term. However, this is not given on the formula sheet, and you would have to learn this, and it only works when certain information is given. This will always work. Um, this is simply just useful and can be quicker in some instances. Then we move on to a geometric sequence, which is the second form of sequence that you will study in mathematics. So a geometric sequence, the general formula is your term equals a, the first term, times R, your common ratio, to the N number of terms, minus 1. So, your common ratio is the ratio between two consecutive terms in the sequence. So, say term 4 over term 3 will be equal to term 3 over term 2, and that will be equal to your common ratio. So in order to prove that a sequence is geometric, you need to prove that there is a common ratio. You would do this by going the fourth term over the third term equals the third term over the second term equals the second term over the first term. And if that is true, then a common ratio exists and the sequence is geometric. A geometric mean, if you insert a number between X and Y to form a geometric sequence, this can be done as follows. So k would be the number you insert, um, where x and y are terms in the sequence. You would go y over k equals k over x. So therefore, k squared equals xy, k equals plus minus the root of xy. Simply solve from here. So your geometric mean is plus minus the root of your first term times your second term, which is shown here. A geometric series is simply the sum of the terms in 
the geometric sequence. So it's this, the formula is the sum to the number of terms that you are required equals a the first term times r to the n, n being the number of terms, minus 1 over r minus 1. Or it, the same formula can be written in this format. However, you must be careful of your signs as often people mix up these signs in each formula. However, these formulas are given on the formula sheet and just make sure that these signs are right. Then we move on to sigma notation, which confuses quite a few people. So sigma notation is simply the sum. It's the sum of a series. You will get, this is known as sigma. Your value at the top here is the number of terms. In order to know how many terms you need to add up from the sequence, you take this number being the top number minus the bottom number being this number over here plus one. This is simply the formula for the series that the sequence that you're calculating. And this is the term that you're going to start at. So in this example, you have, you are going to calculate to five terms starting at zero. So you go five minus zero as shown here. So it equals five. So five minus zero is five, five plus one equals six. So you will have six terms that you're going to add up. Then you will start by subbing in zero. So three times zero is zero plus one. Then you will sub one all the way until five and you will get the sum. Then we move on to quadratic sequences, which are the most common common form of sequences that you will deal with and in many ways the hardest but in actual fact you should you shouldn't find too many problems with them they are not too hard so quadratic sequences the general form formula for them is your term term that you are calculating equals a n squared plus b n plus c however in this case a is not your first term Unlike the others, where A is your first term, A is not your first term in this. So, for example, if they were to give you a, a sequence being 1, 5, 13, 25, you would then calculate the difference between consecutive terms being 12, 8, and 4. You would then calculate the difference between those terms to get the second order difference. This over here is known as your second order difference. Your second order difference will be constant throughout. In order to calculate, you must now remember that your pattern being this row is A plus B plus C equals the first term being 1. First order difference here, 3A plus B equals 4, your first term in that sequence. Then second order difference, 2A equals 4, your first term in this sequence. Now, you would go 2A equals 4 from here. We now make it equal to this over here. So we solve for a and a equals 2. We now move on to the first order difference where it's 3a plus b equals 4, but we know a is 2. So 3 times 2 is 6 plus b equals 4. So we now know b equals minus 2. For the top row, we know that a plus b plus c equals 1 from here. And we know the value of a and b, so we simply solve for c and c comes out to be 1. So quadratic sequences are solved like that. And in many cases, um, your a, b and c are easy to find and should not be a problem. Then we move on to infinite series. So we work with divergent and convergent. So divergent series will series their sum will be infinitely small or infinitely large. They will not tend towards a positive or negative number. Whereas a convergent series, the sum will tend towards a number. Convergent series, in order for a series to be convergent, they may ask you to test whether a series is convergent. You look for two things. Firstly, the series must be geometric. And secondly, the common ratio being R, which remember we calculate as two consecutive terms over each other. So term the third term over the second term or the sixth term over the fifth term, that will be your R 
your R must be greater than negative 1 and less than 1, and R cannot equal 0. If this is true, your series will converge towards a number. It will tend towards a positive or negative number, the sum of your series. So the sum to infinity is a formula which is given on your formula sheet. It's your sum to infinity equals A being the first term of your, of your sequence over 1 minus R, your common difference. That will give you a number, and that is the number of the infinite terms of those of that sequence added together.